Hi, I'm Daniel Musgrove, and it's my honor and privilege to bring to you Musgrove Music Gospel Hour. Well, praise the Lord. This is Bishop Thomas E. Douglas and the Holy Temple Holiness Church of Deliverance. Holy Temple located at 3798 Northwest 19th Street in the city of Lauder Hill, Florida. Call a friend and tell him now that the Holy Temple Holiness Church of Deliverance broadcast is now on the air, bringing you a message of faith, hope, and and deliverance. We thank you for tuning in at gmap1.com where we are airing this powerful broadcast to encourage you that God is still on the throne. I want you to know that God is a man able to hear your cry and answer your call. He's able to keep that which you have committed uh, into his hands against that day, the day of deliverance, the day of judgment, and the day of frustration. For the enemy tries to frustrate the brethren. Uh, Jesus came and he came that we might have life uh, and have it more abundantly. You know that uh, adversary of ours, Lucifer, that dragon, that serpent, do not want us to have the abundant living peaceably. And so that's why I'm here today to encourage you. Uh, amen. With this particular subject, we are well able uh, through the power of the spoken word. Uh, and we want to take our scriptural foundation from Psalms, the 48th chapter and the first verse, which says, great is the Lord uh, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, uh, in the mountain of his holiness. The Lord told us in the scriptures that there shall be a way, a highway, and it shall be called a way of holiness. It's so simple that a wayfarer, wayfaring man or a child uh, need not to error. Uh, so when God starts to give us, amen, the deutimus, the power, the great intestinal fortitude, the authority to take over land and dominion, uh, amen, uh, uh, of countries and, and, and atmospheres, uh, amen, as we walk in the presence of God, uh, we sometimes feel Inadequate. I remember, amen, Numbers, the 13th chapter and the 26th verse, uh, it, it mentioned about the children of Israel went and came to Moses and Aaron, to all the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran, uh, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation uh, about what they found when they went into the land of promise, which was the land of Canaan. They brought back, amen, the, the confirmation that what God God told us he would give us a land flowing with milk and honey. Sure enough, there's a whole lot of milk and honey in the land. They began to identify. As a matter of fact, they brought back some samples of the grapes. And the clusters were so big, it took a couple of men, amen, to carry a cluster of grapes. Listen to me, glory be to God. Although it may be your season in the, amen, the land of Samaria, the desert, the dry place, uh, God is getting ready to speak. Sprinkle, uh, amen, the promise upon your life. Uh, but you must hold fast uh, to the promise because if you start looking at the problem like 10 of the spies did, they came back and they said, yes, the land is flowing with milk and honey, and these are examples of what's in the land. But the men that are in the, uh, that particular place is like giants, uh, and we are like grasshoppers to them. When I read that, I began to get frustrated in my Holy Ghost spirit uh, of people who keep looking at the problem uh, and not focusing on the promise. Uh, because the promises of God are yea, uh, and in him... Amen. God promised if he spoke it, shall he not do it? Uh, amen. Glory be to God. And God was letting me see that there were 12 spies uh, who supposed to go in the land uh, in the spirit of unity. When there is a spirit of unity, there is uh, a bond of peace. Obviously, uh, there was a separation and a breakdown in the unit. Uh, Ten of them saw the giants. Uh, two of them saw the promise. Come on, say amen. Somebody, glory be to God. And here comes Caleb up in Joshua. 
Caleb looks at, amen, Moses and says, we are well able uh, to go in and conquer the land. Uh, what God is trying to teach us as men and women of God, uh, as those that are to be the ambassadors, the pillars in the kingdom, they're holding up the bloodstained banner, that are the blockers, amen, and representatives of God. We are attaches, uh, amen, from the kingdom of heaven, where we are important people. Uh, amen. We may not have the title ambassador upon our lives, but we are an ambassador for Christ. We represent our sovereign state, uh, amen, which is in heaven. And whatever is powerful in heaven uh, is powerful where we stand uh, because the Lord imparted power. Look in Matthew's the 10th chapter. He called his 12 disciples and he gave them power, amen, over every unclean thing. Uh, and according to the scriptures, amen, after he gave them power, amen, the next verse, he called them apostles. Uh, because when God assigns you, equip you, give you power, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, he gives you uh, an assignment. There is no way in the world can any of us be in the army of the Lord, go through basic training, ready for the war, and we will never go into battle and fight. God even have, amen, just like the natural army, some Navy SEALs, some spiritual SEALs, glory be to God, some spiritual Marines that will go further than the natural fighting man. God was encouraging me. He said, have faith and not doubt because when somebody is cast down in the spirit, uh, we need to speak a right word in due season. Uh, For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Uh, they shall mount up with wings like an eagle. They shall shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. But I want you to remember Galatians 6 and 7. Be not deceived. God is not marked. Whatsoever a man soweth, so shall he also reap. And that's why God is asking and amen and pleading and calling uh, on the people of God. Uh, amen. To sow that seed. Uh, amen. In the soil of the minds of the people. Uh, that the seed of doubt, amen, may be rebuked and cast out. Uh, the seed of discouragement, disappointment, depression. Uh, the Bible says Said, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, if you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house uh, are many mansions. If it were not true, uh, I would have told you. So Jesus told us he go to prepare a place for us uh, that where he is. Uh, we may be there also. Uh, and aren't you glad, glory be to God, uh, that he did not leave us comfortless. Uh, he left the comforter, the Holy Ghost, uh, which leads us and guides us to all truth. I have been, amen, encouraged and sometimes uh, when I could not see my way, uh, standing at the crossroads, don't know which way to go. Mm, uh, but I recognize when I call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. Uh, and sometimes I would lift up my hand and say, God, uh, send help from the sanctuary. Uh, send strength from on high. Uh, send wisdom from your word. Uh, because if we lean and depend on Jesus, uh, we will find out that we will not falter uh, and we will not err. Uh, according to the Bible, we err because we know not the scriptures. Uh, Yes, our words should be positive words of faith, uh, but speaking mere words, uh, amen, and not doing anything uh, is not going to work because the Bible declares that faith without works is dead. Uh, words of faith are to encourage, uh, but the step of faith brings, amen, God's promise to your doorstep. Uh, in other words, if you believe, uh, according to the Bible, the Bible said, uh, if you have faith and believe, you can speak to that mountain and say, mountain, be down removed uh, and a mountain shall be plucked up and cast into the base of the sea. Uh, now let me give you two perspectives here. Uh, you might not literally see the mountain get up uh, and move to the sea. Uh, but one thing you will notice if you trust in God, uh, the impact and the effect of the mountain have no strength over your life. Uh, it will not hinder you anymore and you will trust God uh, because you are waiting on the promise. Uh, and when God comes, you know he does not come when we want him. Uh, but he's always on time. Our time is not his time. Our ways are not his ways. That's why I often pray, God, let your will uh, be done 
in my life. And while you're waiting on God, have faith and not fear. Uh, glory be to God. You see, these ten spies had fear, uh, but two of them have faith. I want to share with you, if you can just sprinkle a little bit of faith uh, in the midst of fear, faith will come out on top every time. There were five uh, uh, virgins that were wise and five were foolish. You cannot play, uh, amen, with your Holy Ghost. Uh, if you got oil in your lamp, uh, amen, a song said you got to have a little oil in your lamp to keep it burning because if you don't have oil at the time the bridegroom coming, you may be out trying to buy something you should have already had. Uh, and that's why sometimes we miss the season of our blessing because we're out of position. The Bible tells us plainly uh, that sometimes God moves instantly and sometimes he waits on certain things. There were three types of deliverances I like to talk about. There was a woman that had an issue of blood, huh? and she pressed her way through the crowd, tried to touch the hem of his garment, but there was a centurion, a man, a centurion rather, that had a son, a man that was dying, uh, and he told Jesus, you don't even have to go to my house. Just speak the word, huh? and it shall be done. There is power in the spoken word of God. There is power in prayer, and there is a double anointing when you got the spoken word and the power of prayer assassinating the wiles of the enemy. Listen to me. God sometimes allow giants to get in our way because he wants to prove to us uh, that greater is he uh, that's on the inside of us uh, than he that's in the world. Now, listen, let me take you back uh, to the prophet Elijah who had an armor bearer by the name of Gehazi. And you remember, glory be to God, the armies and the chariots of the enemy was camped all around Gehazi. Glory be to God and Elijah. And Elijah told his servants, say, go out there and look. Listen to me, servants. Sometimes you got to listen to the full instruction of your leader. Uh, he said, go out and look uh, and tell me what you see. Uh, and the man of God went out and looked uh, and he came back and he says, uh, I didn't see anything. Uh, and so leaders who are wise, uh, who have wisdom and have, uh, amen, the ear, uh, their ear rather to the mouth of God, uh, would hear God's instruction saying, now rephrase that. Uh, he said, now listen, uh, amen, I want you to go out a second time. And he told him to go out and he prayed, God, drop the scales from his eyes. And when he looked the second time, he saw the chariots of fire uh, encamped around Israel. What I like about Caleb, he came into the midst and he said, listen to me. I mean, we're well able to take this mountain. We're well able to take this land. Glory be to God. And what is awesome about God, amen, when you have faith, Here's a principle that I've learned. The majority is not always right when you got faith. <laughs> Amen. Glory be to God. It could be 12 people. It could be 10 people who say, man, you can't do that. There's no way in the world. You don't have the money. You don't have the backing. You don't have the education. And man, you're not the type of person that can walk in that area and have dominance. Uh, and when God puts the faith in you, uh, you know we walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, so here Caleb had an experience. You know what he did? Caleb went to Moses when he was about 40 years old. And he said, Moses, he said, now give me my mountain. And 40 years later, he comes back to Joshua after Moses has gone on with the Lord. Here's a transition that took place with Moses. Before Moses went on with the Lord, God told Moses to stand Joshua in the midst of the sanctuary of, of the people. And God spoke to Joshua and said, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. And what that meant in my mindset as I began to dissect that and begin to understand the revelation that God was giving me for this point was God took all the promises he made to the nation of Israel while Moses was in charge and transferred them promises on Joshua. That is why Caleb came back. 40 some years later, he was almost 85 years old and went to Joshua and said to Joshua, give me my mountain. He said, I was able to take it when Moses was in charge and I'm able to take it now. In other words, amen, time did not take the fight out of me. I'm glad about this thing. Glory be to God. Do I wait? Glory be to God on the promises of God. It did not take the fight. It did not take the fire. It did not take the determination out of me. Yes, God didn't do it in a day's time. He may not have done it in a year's time. But when God comes, uh, glory be to God with victory in your life uh, and bring it to your doorstep, it is always on time. Walk in victory. Know that God has heard your cry and he will answer your call.